for one it is danny and welcome to this update video i hope you guys are doing great this evening and you're going to be looking at the latest across the atlantic and as you can see on this graphic from the national hurricane center immediately tammy has reformed so its remnants have redeveloped into uh, back into tropical storm tammy so it's going to be loitering out there for some time and in the caribbean there is that area that will try to develop over the coming days regardless it is likely to induce periods of heavy rainfall which may trigger flooding across portions of the north caribbean and even into the bahamas as well so we're going to be looking at all of this and let's get straight into it going on to the satellite imagery now here we can see it so there is some moisture out there in the main development region and uh, that is tammy out there and we can see that that trough in the caribbean is inducing so much unstable weather lots of showers and thunderstorms across some areas potentially even flooding but going to the northwest caribbean we're not seeing as much activity we'll look at why in a moment over in the eastern pacific there we can see uh, a disturbance which is trying to get itself together which is designated as invest 92e now it is called an invest because it is an area of investigation it's been closely watched for development let's drift closer into the caribbean let's zoom in here and we can see that again there's a lot going on over in the eastern islands there has been a lot of heavy rainfall thunderstorms for portions of the uh, abc Isles, not for everywhere across the three islands but for some areas even headed toward trinidad tobago some parts of barbados uh, going through the lesser antilles the virgin islands Puerto Rico and even for sections of Hispaniola so uh, there's all that activity which is likely to persist a little bit longer as we head to the Northwest Caribbean as I said there isn't a whole lot happening but uh, there is a lot of dry air so that is kind of helping to stabilize conditions let's go on to that map very quickly there we can see that mass of dry air being indicated by those shades of yellows and oranges and reds so the more intense that shading is the more dry air is in abundance within in the area so there's a lot of dry air out there and that is helping to stabilize conditions and uh, this will be one of the hindrances as it relates to the development of the caribbean disturbance let's go back to the satellite imagery here zoom into the southwest caribbean there we can see this activity associated with that broad low pressure area so there could be some development and yes there are those very warm waters to feel that activity however that is not the only factors I speak about in my videos. Uh, there also has to be those conducive upper level winds as well as a lot of moisture available. So in this case, there is some dry air potentially out ahead of it because it's moving more and more into the Caribbean. So that could pose an issue as it relates to getting all those thunderstorms uh, thriving associated with that low pressure area. But regardless, even talking about an unorganized system, there could be periods of heavy rainfall. There could still be those dangerous impacts in sections of the Caribbean headed to Jamaica, portions of Cuba, if that area is expansive enough. So this is an if here. If it is expansive enough, impacts could be as far west as the Cayman Islands and uh, even to Haiti. And then of course going up into the Bahamas as well. So the timing of this will most likely be around Monday headed to Tuesday for Jamaica. So again, there could be those periods of a very heavy rainfall once there's enough activity associated with the disturbance. But as of right now, the National Hurricane Center is designated a 30% chance of development for the next seven days, and it is not designated an invest as of when I'm recording. So maybe it will. Let's see how it evolves as we head into the next couple of days as we head through the weekend. But I will be keeping a very close watch on this and keeping you guys posted as per usual. Now let's go ahead and talk about Tammy. So this is the storm on the satellites, the infrared satellite imagery. You can clearly see that counterclockwise rotation and there is the island of Bermuda. Now here's the latest quinn forecast from the National Hurricane Center and we can see that Tammy is sustaining winds up to 65 miles per hour at the maximum and moving to the northwest at 3 miles per hour. So it's barely moving now but should be on that general eastward track before uh, making its way a bit more to the south and loitering out there as it eventually weakens and dissipates yet again. So that is what is expected of Tammy and Bermuda right now. Likely maybe some periods of those uh, gusty winds and even those rough seas out there as well. Finally, we're hopping over into the Eastern Pacific where we've got Invest 92E. So that disturbance over there is loitering just offshore of the Pacific coast of the Central American territories and it is given a very high chance of development, 90% chance as we're going to be heading through the next 7 days. 
and an 80% chance through the next two days. So maybe by this weekend, we could see a new tropical depression forming. And once the system reaches the threshold to be considered a tropical storm, it will acquire the name Pillar. So that is the next name to be used for the Eastern Pacific hurricane season. And so uh, this is likely to eventually move inland. Models are kind of all over the place with it though, but even drifting close enough could induce some periods of very heavy rainfall across sections of Central America. So here we are taking a look at the model track guidance. Again, there you can see those tracks all over the place. So the system could loiter around and may eventually make its way inland and uh, if those remnants of it make their way over Central America and into the Caribbean, we may see something try to form from that or reform from that. But uh, that is what is expected as of right now. And so guys, uh, going back to the Atlantic with our Caribbean disturbance, we're now going on to the ensemble tracks. And so first up, we have the tracks for Euro. And this goes out to the middle of next week as we're going to be heading into Wednesday. And here we can see that the various tracks are not expecting something very strong. So they're showing a weak low pressure area drifting generally to the north. And again, it does not take a tropical depression or tropical storm to induce dangerous impacts. Going on to the GFS tracks as well. So with these members want to suggest that the trough currently bringing impacts to the eastern islands will try to develop regardless it could bring some rainfall activity to the Turks and Caicos Islands and the Bahamas but uh, there we have those tracks for the low pressure area that has formed and, uh, the strength of it the intensity will all be dependent on how conducive conditions are but I'm not expecting anything much just because of all that dry air I spoke about and also the fact that the winter isn't highly conducive right now but even a small window of opportunity and the system taking advantage to get itself together can result in some rapid formation of it so we'll see what happens guys models are generally not showing something very strong so that is some good news some of us would really love the increase in rainfall activity but the problem comes in with the flooding the landslides the mudslides that take place and so i'll keep you posted i'll keep my eyes on the system as per usual and with it uh getting progressively better and better uh then eventually the national hurricane center is going to be increasing that formation chance but that is pretty much what i wanted to share with you in this evening update and i hope you found it to be quite informative but if you have any questions please do leave them in the comments i'll respond to you once i get the chance to do so and remember to always be weather wise